and welcome to today's Steris webinar, an introduction to the Ethylene Oxide Master File Pilot Program. I'm Lindsay McGowan, Vice President of Quality Operations for Steris Applied Sterilization Technologies, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Thank you for joining. Steris is excited to be the first contract sterilizer accepted to participate in the FDA's Ethylene Oxide Master File Pilot Program which supports our efforts to reduce the amount of ethylene oxide used through our sustainable EO initiative, and also provides a faster pathway to much needed processing redundancy for our customers in both alternate processing locations and sterilization chambers. To help us learn more about the pilot program are today's presenters. Brian McAvoy, Senior Director of Global Technologies Scott Beard, Senior Director of Quality Operations, and Bill Broadbeck, Senior Director of Regulatory Affairs. Together, Brian, Scott, and Bill will provide an introduction to the pilot program, discuss customer, product, and process change eligibility, and provide an overview of the implementation steps for Class Three device manufacturers. All attendees are on mute for the presentation, However, I would like to encourage everyone to submit questions using the questions function on the GoToWebinar control panel. Questions will be answered following today's webinar. Today's presentation will also be recorded and uploaded to our Steris Applied Sterilization Technologies YouTube channel. Please note that continuing education credits are not provided as part of today's webinar. And with that, I'll turn it over to Brian McAvoy to begin the presentation. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi, everybody. This is Brian. Um, I have the great pleasure today in providing a few slides by means of an introduction to the EO Master File uh, Program, for which Steris have received the approval for participation from the FDA on October the 25th last. By means of some background, um, in 2019, FDA launched a number of initiatives in response to concerns regarding the availability of devices sterilized by EO. So, such initiatives included the launch of the Innovation Challenges, the hosting of the Panel of Device Advisory Committee, and the launch of the EO Master File Pilot Program. STERIS have and proudly continue to participate and support all of these initiatives. The purpose of the EO Master File Pilot Program was to provide a streamlined regulatory process for those looking to provide additional capacity and flexibility through business continuity planning, and most importantly, those looking to migrate to improve the EO processes. The pilot program allows manufacturers of Class 3 devices under PMA to make certain modifications to their sterilization process without the requirement to submit a PMA supplement. You'll hear more about the eligibility later in the webinar today. By means of an explanation of master files, sorry Scott, I might just go to the previous slide, please. By means of some explanation of master files, a device manufacturer who's an applicant of a PMA or a sponsor of an IDEA may rely on proprietary and confidential information from another party as part of the submission and regulatory review. And it's with this in mind the FDA established the master file system, whereby such proprietary information is made available to the FDA for the purpose of the review process. And examples of such confidential information may be a manufacturing process, and this may include sterilization, or maybe information about a material or a subassembly. An FDA will reference the master file as part of the evaluation of the submission. FDA references Steris's AST master file for sterilization related information when assessing customer submissions. So again, while we focus today on the use of the master file for the purpose of the EO pilot program, it should be noted that all medical device related submissions by customers of Steris are eligible to leverage the master file to support that submission. And next slide, please. As previously mentioned, the key motivation for the EO master file program was to provide a streamlined regulatory process for those manufacturers looking to migrate from a legacy EO process to a new and improved EO process utilizing reduced levels of sterilant. 
In 2017, STERS launched the Sustainable EO Sterilization Services Program, which delivers required sterility assurance in accordance with the validation requirements of ISO 11135, but with reduced levels of EO sterilant, ultimately resulting in lower product residuals, improved occupational safety, and optimized supply chains. So as you can imagine, we at STERS are excited about how both our SEO program and the EO master file pilot program can support our customers. Next slide, please. An SEO process is achieved where validation is performed by our tech team professionals who help customers realize optimum cycle design and appropriate process challenge devices fully validated in accordance with ISO 11135, using sterling concentrations of less than 400 milligrams per liter. Validations are performed in full compliance with the ISO standard and documented in accordance with our global work instructions for EO validation. And for anybody looking to learn a little bit more about our SEO services, uh, you can refer to sterisast.com or simply contact one of our team for further information. Next slide, please. Some of the benefits of participating in the program, and a, a key benefit is leveraging the master file as a streamlined regulatory approach. The FDA register describes the scope of the EO master file pilot program whereby manufacturers adding process redundancy or converting to an optimized EO process may potentially participate. We at STARS are particularly excited about the opportunity for an efficient and streamlined regulatory process for those customers availing of our SEO cycles. Furthermore, it should be recognized that while the pilot program is applicable to those manufacturers submitting to the FDA, STARS AST master file contains the documentation and procedures such as our global work construction for EO validation that is deployed to all of our EO processing sites across our global network of some 18 EO sites. Thus, the master file program offers all of our customers the opportunity to avail of a globally consistent approach to EO validation, fully compliant with ISO 11135. You'll now hear from my colleague, Mr. Scott Beard, who will discuss the topic of the eligibility in the pilot program. Thank you, Brian. I'd like to take a few minutes and walk through the eligibility requirements for inclusion into the EO Master File Pilot Program. The eligibility for entry into the program has three elements which must be met. And these include customer eligibility, device eligibility, and process change eligibility. These eligibility requirements will be discussed in greater detail in the following slides. And after today's webinar, we, strong, we still strongly encourage anyone considering participation in this program to review the FDA's Federal Register Notice. The following flowchart illustrates some of the common scenarios to help determine if a customer is eligible for the EO Master File Program. So we start with, is the customer actively processing or has active validation approved uh, in, an, in an existing PMA for the eligible device at a Steris AST EO facility? If the answer is yes, then the next question is, is the Steris AST uh, uh, ethylene oxide technical team performing the validation? Of note, the validations conducted by our EO tech team, which are subject to the pilot program, as with all validations conducted by our EO tech team, are in compliance with the requirements of ISO 11135, which is the sterilization of healthcare products, ethylene oxide requirements for the development, validation, and routine control of, of a sterilization process for medical devices. And the last question is, is the customer uh, converting to an SEO cycle or a sustainable ethylene oxide cycle with lower EO, uh, EO levels. Adding a new location within, within a STAIRS facility or an additional chamber for redundancy. If the answer is yes to any of these questions, then the validation is eligible for the EO master file project. If any of the above questions results in an answer of no, then you may not be eligible for the EO master file program. Let's take a look at what devices are eligible for the master file program now that we've talked about if a customer is eligible. 
So the first thing we look at is, is the device a single use class three medical device that is approved under a pre-market or PMA approval and which have been validated at a sterous location as described in the previous slide? Even if your device is not a PMA approved product, you may be able to still leverage the Steris EO master file in support of your regulatory submissions as Brian talked about earlier. Please contact your Steris sales representative or the ethylene oxide tech team to see how. Now that we've seen what makes the device eligible, let's take a quick look at what products do not qualify for the EO master file project. These include devices that are not class three medical devices, devices that are not marketed under a PMA, devices that are not single use devices, devices that are a reprocessed single use device. And lastly, if the devices are provided non-sterile. In addition, any medical device, regardless of class or PMA status that utilizes anything other than a 10 to the minus six sterility level, has special biocompatibility, sterile residual compatibility, or sterile residual limits outside of the limits outlined in section 4.3 of ISO 10993-7 are also ineligible for the inclusion into the STERIS EO master file program. So far, we've discussed which customers and devices are eligible. The third category of eligibility is process change. Let's review what types of processing changes are eligible for the EO master file program. As a customer, if you have met the customer eligibility as well as the device eligibility and are making certain changes between sterilization sites or making, cer making certain changes to the sterilization process that utilize reduced EO concentrations, you're eligible to participate in the program. In addition, if you are conducting a validation that increases flexibility in processing redundancy, such as adding a second Steris AST site for EO processing, or validating in multiple chambers within the same Steris EO processing facility, then your validation is eligible for the master file use. Some examples of process changes are listed below. Once again, you must meet the customer and device eligibility requirements for these situations to apply. The first one we'll talk about is the conversion of a conventional EO cycle to another conventional EO cycle for processing redundancy within the same contract sterilization provider. In this case, the cycle must be processed at an existing PMA approved sterilization facility. Secondly, if you're, con if you're making a conversion of a conventional EO cycle to a reduced optimized EO concentration cycle for lower EO usage with the same contract sterilizer at the same processing facility, once again, the cycle must be processed at an existing PMA approved sterilization facility. And thirdly, a conversion of a conventional EO cycle to a reduced optimized EO cycle for lower EO concentration, once again with the same contract sterilizer at possibly a different processing location. These all um, are examples of process change eligibility. Now we'll take a look at what types of process changes would not be eligible for the EO master file pilot program. As a customer, if you design your own validation study and coordinate directly with your current processing facility to execute the validation, then this process would not be eligible for the master file pilot program. However, if you have designed your validation in the past, you can become eligible if you allow Steris ethylene oxide tech team to create and execute your validation for you. This, this can be done for validations that reduce EO concentration or create processing redundancy. If the aim of the validation is to modify parameters which are outside existing validation parameters, then this would also not be an eligible validation. Changes in device specification, device performance, 
or EO residual biocompatibility are also examples of non-eligible changes. And lastly, if you're changing the design specification, the material composition, the packaging or load configuration of your product under the validation, then these changes are also not eligible for inclusion in the EO master file program. If after this webinar, if you have any additional questions as you start your validation process, the Steris Ethylene Oxide Tech team can help in assisting uh, in determining your eligibility. You may not have a current and active validation with Steris AST, but there are still ways to become eligible for the EO master file pilot program in the future. These include validating through the Steris AST EO Tech team, as we have mentioned in several of the earlier slides. And secondly, you may submit a site change PMA supplement that would identify a Steris AST site as the new or alternate sterilization provider. And then once approved, you would be eligible to participate in the pilot program as long as all the other eligibility requirements that we've discussed are met. I thank you for your time, and Bill Broadback will now describe the process of the pilot program implementation. Bill? Great, thank you very much, Scott. Then good day to everyone. As Scott mentioned, I'm gonna walk through some of the practical aspects of implementation of the pilot program. So can I have the next slide, please? So when implementing a sterilization process change, uh, as Scott has mentioned, there's different eligibility requirements that must be met. But once that device has been determined to meet the eligibility for the pilot program, the customer will be provided with a draft post-approval letter slash letter of intent. And just to take a step back there, the post-approval letter is what's actually referred to when FDA's Federal Register Notice, uh, but we are calling it also a letter of intent internally. So that's why we're calling it a post-approval letter slash letter of intent. But once again, if you have an eligible device, that letter of intent will be uh, sent to the customer, which is then to be completed and returned to Steris AST. Once Steris AST receives that, it signifies its readiness to proceed with the initiating use of the AST master file for the indicated devices that are present within that letter of intent. Again, there'll be a draft uh, format letter that uh, Steris AST will fill out some of that information and then provide to the customer. And then we ask the customer to fill out the remaining of the information on that. Then the validation proceeds and upon completion of those activities, Steris AST will then issue a letter of authorization to the device manufacturer and will provide a copy of that to FDA. Uh, attached to that letter of authorization will be the completely executed post approval letter slash letter of intent. And again, that'll be on file with the customer, with a, a FDA and with Steris AST. It is once that that letter of authorization is electronically delivered to FDA as well as the customer, AST will then add the device to its master file and the device manufacturer may now use the validated master file compliance cycle and or processing redundancy. Next slide, please. So how can customers coordinate with Steris? Well, firstly, the, the customer needs to contact Steris AST account manager to request that a device validation be subject to under the pilot program. That will kick off our uh, processes internally at Steris, Steris AST. And then Steris Regulatory Affairs Department will confirm eligibility after review of the device and provide that draft of the post approval letter slash letter of intent that is to be completed by the, the customer and returned to Steris AST. Lastly, once we complete the validation by the, by the EO Tech team in accordance with the approved protocol, the letter of authorization will be provided to the device manufacturer and FDA, as well as a copy of that letter of intent to be on file with both parties. Truly, thank you for attending the webinar. We appreciate you taking the time to learn with us and hope you found the, ses the session beneficial. Um, as next steps, please don't hesitate to reach out to your AST account manager with any follow-up questions 